I'm pretty sure that this right here is exactly what we don't want to happen. Okay. I'm, I try not to be a conspiracy theorist. I like to believe in some stuff, just, you know, like everybody does. You know, of course, it'd be interesting if certain things were real. <laughs> Excuse me, but I try to be realistic. I'm almost done with this cold. But I heard this, and um, my mind just goes straight to this kind of, like, jives with the AI and, like, the Terminator type stuff. It's just like, are we really opening up Pandora's box here? Stuff that should not happen that we've made movies about. And then all of a sudden, just like kind of everyday things. 46,000 year old worms discovered on Arctic expedition. And now they're being revived. We have no idea what kind of diseases these things carry. Something that could we have no immunity for. And we're reviving them. While the great pyramids were being erected, they slumbered. The Roman Empire came and went, and they carried on napping. In fact, they slept through all recorded human history. They're a group of roundworms, and they've been lying dormant in the Siberian permafrost for 46,000 years. Until now. The worms, known as nematodes, just woke up. Scientists coax them out of cryptobiosis, a state of metabolism cessation that can occur in extreme environments. According to a study published on July 27th in the journal Close Genetics, their awakening has implications for our understanding of evolutionary processes. As generation times may be stretched from days to millennia, Scientists who are affiliated with research institutes in Europe said, The worm's epic snooze also begs the question, just how long can organisms survive given the right conditions? Discovering the ancient worms. Oh, I can tell you something. Just because they can survive doesn't mean we need to bring them back. <laughs> Researchers first came up uh, upon the worms while exploring a stretch of permafrost, a layer of perennially frozen soil, north of the Arctic Circle in eastern Russia. The creatures were nestled inside a chunk of soil found about 130 feet below the surface alongside ice wedges and gopher burrows. Uh, using radiocarbon dating, research determined the soil dates to the late Pleistocene era and is around 46,000 years old. Upon sequencing the worm's genome, Researchers realized uh, the creatures were members of previously unknown species of nematode. The new nematodes were named Panagrolamus calimensis after a river which they were found near. While invisible to the naked eye, nematodes are everywhere. They are found on every continent and throughout the ocean. Almost any shovel full of soil, freshwater, or marine sediment is likely to have thousands of worms, including new species, according to the University of California, Riverside's Department of Nematology. Waking up the worms. Though the process of cryptobiosis is complicated and not well understood, uh, easing individuals out of it is more straightforward, researchers said. Slowly, gradually thawing at room temperature is done, as it would happen in spring in nature, Philip Schiffer one of the study's authors told McClatchy News. Uh, with a little warm air and some added water, the ancient nematodes bounced back to life. The reanimated creatures were given E. coli bacteria to snack on, so they eat things that we don't do so well with. Afterwards, they even broke their multi-millennial long dry spell and resumed reproductive activity, which resulted in producing of offspring. What? This isn't the first time such a feat has been accomplished. Other organisms have been known to enter cytobiosis, Reacher said, including a lotus seed dating back at least a thousand years that was able to germinate. But when it comes to nematodes, the newfound species are by far the oldest ever to be resurrected, or resuscitated, excuse me. Before this discovery, the longest known period of cytobiosis 
uh, for a nematode was only several decades. The worms likely sleep spanning geological time frames. Uh, once thought to be the stuff of science fiction, will likely be used to advance research in longevity. These organisms have evolved a way to protect their cells, protein, and DNA in very stressful conditions, Schiffer said. Uh, they stop cells, proteins, DNA from degrading. Such degradation happens when humans age. If we dig deeper into the genetics of what these species do, uh, do doing, do, I'm assume it says do during cytobiosis, we might find new uh, avenues uh, to understanding human aging and maybe develop new drugs in the future that help people during old age. Um, I say we either got very lucky or we're about to, we just read the beginning of the end. <laughs> you thought COVID was bad. Wait until you get the nematode sickness that they brought back. I mean, uh, we're at a point in science where I think you kind of have to push the envelope on some things. And some of the things that we push the envelope on seem very dangerous. I'm, I'm sure that they are using all the precautions necessary to make sure that if there's any sickness involved in this, that it's not going to get out. But at the same time, Bro, oh, I don't know. This seems sketchy. I hope that they can figure out... Like, I mean... Th this is how I kind of view the whole thing. I have been told and heard throughout many different people... And, like, through many different articles... That we are living in a time... Where the first people that are going to hit the age of 150... Are alive today. And... We're like at that edge where it's like technology is almost caught up, but over the next like 30, 40 years, technology could catch up to a point where we figure out anti-aging. Like we figure shit out and part of it might have to do with stuff like this, where they take the genes of like, I mean, the genes that um, elephants make to like we went over to, uh, you know, to stop their sperm from being destroyed in the heat and it's the same thing that causes them not to get cancer anywhere near as much you know or bring in nematode is able to cryogenically freeze itself and come out 46,000 years later and we're able to get that gene that helps protect it and we're able to do space travel or something like that who knows who knows we're like right on the edge where that could be a thing. And to, in order to do that, you have to kind of push the envelope a little bit. But at the same time, you push it in the wrong direction. Move on. Um, and you get a pandemic. You know, you say what you want about that whole situation. But, you know, for those who know, no. You know, it's, some things can get kind of sketchy. And some people don't take... I don't know. There's a lot There's a lot behind all of it. This, I mean, it could be a great thing. It could be a bad thing. I don't know. Let me know what you think down below. Do you think this could be the beginning of the end or the beginning of the new chapter? I hope it's the beginning of the new chapter. I'd like to live 150, 200 years. Absolutely. 150, 200 years. I don't want to go down. I want to see all the awesome stuff that comes out. I like life. I like living. I don't know. Just me personally. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll see you on the next one. Keep it wild.